Hello everybody on the interwebs and welcome to the painting portal. If you are new here, I am your host, I'm a stroll. And um, today, just like every day, I am making a painting. <laughs> um, I am super duper proud of this piece and um, I'm actually hoping to get some prints made up of this one. Um, I am supposed to be having some prints of some other pieces coming uh, tomorrow actually, which is very exciting. And I do also have stickers and um, this original and some other original um, artworks on my shop. So if anybody is interested in any of that, then um, you can hit the link in the description. Um, aside from that, if you like me and the content that I produce, feel free to subscribe. If you would like to contact me further, leave a comment. And um, if you just enjoyed the video, please drop a like. It really means a lot. Um, but without further ado, um, I'm going to start right in with this video just saying that this is the largest piece I have ever made. So right off the bat, it was a little bit daunting to do that. And um, I don't know. I, I really, I am so in love with how this came out, though. And um, I feel like it just has this very, like, grandeur presence to it that I really like. And I think part of that is um, because of the size that it, um, that it is, but yeah, so, um, if you guys want to see the sketching process for this painting, I actually do have a YouTube video up, um, that I can link somewhere, or if not, you can just find it on my channel, um, but yeah, so, um, in that video I talked a little bit more about, um, the symbolism of each individual element, which I will briefly go over again. Um, just so that you guys don't have to hop around here. Uh, yeah, so, um, if anybody wants to see the behind the scenes of this painting, um, you can head over to my channel, the video is up there, and, um, yeah, but going right into the actual process of the painting, so, um, you guys saw in the very beginning of the video that my mom had actually painted on this canvas, so it was kind of lumpy, and that was a little bit of a challenge, um, especially being that I put a lot, a lot of layers on this painting um, <laughs> between the skin. Um, the vines are actually pretty simple. The bottom of the painting, I put like five layers of black on. You guys will probably see at least one or two layers that I put on later um, just to make sure everything's clean and stuff. Um, but yeah, so that was a little bit of an extra added challenge, but it really wasn't um, too bad at all. So. Yeah, um, I really found a lot of just peace of mind working on this um, individual painting. I feel like when I started this, I was kind of just going through um, some personal stuff in my life that was kind of difficult to deal with. And um, I definitely used this painting as a way for me to work through my issues and what I was going through and um, just kind of like using it as a way to better communicate with myself and how I'm thinking, how I'm feeling about everything. And plus it made me feel like I was being productive when there wasn't really anything um, going on and that is kind of like a big thing for me. So this piece was very, um, very much of an emotional sustenance painting um which i think in the future i am going to really try to hone down and only really work on paintings that i do feel super passionate about and that i do feel have a really good message because personally if i have a voice i might as well use it to say something good and even if i don't have a voice i can still say good things so you know um there's no point in wasting my time and my breath um, with creating things just to create things. And there, there is definitely something to that. Um, there is something very therapeutic about that. I find that, um, you know, creating just for the sake of creating can be um, very fulfilling. But in all honesty, I... Um, I just feel like there are other outlets if I just want to create something then maybe I'll just sketch or something you know like so for the pieces that I'm gonna actually invest a lot of time and energy and effort 
um, into making. I want to actually use that piece to send a positive message. And in this piece, I would say um, the message is breaking free of the parts of yourself that you don't like or um, that you think maybe other people don't like um, to in order to connect with people and um, grow close with people. And this piece also just had like, it had a very, um, I don't really know how to say it quite right, so if this comes out weird, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it has like a very good balance between feminine and masculine energy. And I don't just mean like the figures, I know that's kind of all you can see right now, but um, I just feel like this, like the energy of this piece when I started was very, very feminine. And um, I didn't really have a problem with that. I have been working on getting more in touch with my feminine side because I've always just been a really masculine woman. But <laughs> um, I think in the beginning of this piece, it really helped me get in touch with that part of myself. And then as I continued adding elements and um, just working on it and thinking through how everything was going to look and how everything was going to symbolically fit together, I feel like it just gave me a really nice sense of completion and connection not only with myself but like just with everything um and that is also why i've been sharing this so much on my instagram and my pinterest and stuff um just because i i am really really proud of this piece and it just it means so much to me i really am in love with it and i just i don't know i feel like if i if i can get help out of painting then other people are bound to be able to do the same thing too so I just figured it would be good to share as much of the experience of this particular painting um as I could just because you know like I said it was it's good to spread positivity and joy um <laughs> but with that being said um you know like I mentioned earlier there were a lot of hiccups that I ran into with this piece and um in this main portion that you guys have been seeing so far um most of this has just been color matching and shading and making sure that my values were correct when in actuality my values definitely could have been better i don't think that they were bad but um values is one of those things that you can just work on forever and ever and ever and still not have perfect um but I don't know, the faces here is really interesting to me because I feel like I gave the woman a man's face and I gave the man a woman's face and I did it totally unintentionally. When, when I first finished it, I was kind of like angry at myself. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I'm going to have to repaint these faces now. But I kind of just let it sit and I let it sink in and I got used to it and I kind of actually really like it. I think the fact that the female has a bit of a more masculine face and the male has a little bit more of a feminine face, I think really plays into their connection with one another and their dynamic together. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I think that was just something that had to grow on me and there were a lot of moments like that working on this piece and i think part of it is because um i haven't worked on a piece like one specific painting for this long um in a really really long time basically um i've been working on this piece for three weeks so almost a month um but it was definitely worth the time and the energy and the effort that I put into it, so I am very happy. But, um, yeah, so I think I did just have a little bit more of uh, seeing something fresh and then letting it settle and then starting something else and seeing that fresh and letting that settle. And that is all just part of the creative process, you know, and anybody can do that. Um, another thing that I actually really wanted to talk about in this video was... Um, art <laughs> oh my gosh um i always talk about art but more importantly um that anybody can make art and i think 
everybody really should make art. I don't want to tell anybody what to do or anything, but personally, um, painting has been a phenomenal, phenomenal outlet for me to process and understand my emotions and to deal with aspects of my life that I don't really want to deal with um, in the forefront of my mind. And it's just a really good way to express myself and connect with a whole community of people, which is a hell of a lot of fun. But, um, you know, not everybody, not everybody wants to be a painter, and that's fine. Um, I can totally understand that. Um, but in reality, I feel like everybody really should have um, some kind of creative outlet or artistic um, expression that they just use for themselves, even if they don't share it or anything, um, even if they just want to throw it out when they're done. I think being able to create something and bring a vision to life or an emotion or really any number of things, <laughs> um, turning something that you think about into a tangible object is just a, it's really satisfying, and um, and B, I think it just it speaks to something a lot deeper within the 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 human consciousness. If that makes anything, if that makes any sense, like at all. Um, and I know I talked about this in the sketch video, but in reality, the biggest difference between humans and pretty much every other animal is the ability to create and to, you know, craft things, use tools and that sort of thing. Um, and I think, I don't know, I feel like as a person, it's kind of, it's kind of my responsibility <laughs> to use the gifts that I've been given um, in the best way that I can think to do that. And um, even if it's not painting or drawing or whatever, you know, there are so many, so many ways that people can express themselves. Um, you know, some people do it through their work even, you know, some people like, um, some people paint, some people draw, some people make music, some people write, um, you know, some people even are like, um, like welding and glass blowing and oh my god there are just endless <laughs> endless 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 um, roots for creative expression and I think it's really important it's important to me to have a way to express myself because I don't always want to talk about how I'm feeling with the people around me and I don't and even if I do, sometimes it's good to just, um, you know, communicate with yourself about something. I think um, <clears throat> art and creation um, and expression are all really good ways to get in contact with your subconscious self and do a little bit of soul searching. And that is something that literally anybody anywhere anytime can do if they if they really so choose and want to you know and even if you haven't spent the time to hone a skill like painting or writing or music you know playing an instrument or something but you know like anything that is worthwhile it's gonna take time and even like, it doesn't have to be perfect right off the bat, you know? I mean, this painting, I had a million problems with this painting, and it's still my favorite painting that I made, so... Um, you know, you can't expect yourself to be perfect, but you can try. <laughs> it's fun to try. So, yeah. But, I don't know. Really, I guess what I'm just trying to say in a nutshell is anybody can create. It's important to use and appreciate the gifts that you were given. And, um, you know, it's really good to um, contact yourself and get in touch with yourself. Um, but yeah, so 
Um, I guess next I'm just going to talk a little bit about the symbolism in this piece because I did add some things and subtract some things from from the original um, sketch that I posted up on YouTube a couple weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to start off with the people because that is like the main focal point of the piece. So um, with the people, you can see that um, they are conjoined at the far elbow and far um, thighs um, in this piece. And basically, I did that just to show, um, A, the connection between the two characters and, like, just the closeness of their relationship. And um, B, I did that, um, I, I added the conjoined uh, I think it's seven fingered hand in there um because i that was more like um representative of what two people can create together and um how that creation in itself can make new things, which is why I added the um little lighter colored aura strands coming off of each of the fingertips of that hand um and yeah, so I really just wanted to drive that closeness, that connection, and just that like feeling of intimacy without it being um, suggestive. I wanted it to be more um, more platonic feeling, even if it isn't totally platonic. Um, and I think the way that I wrapped their legs around each other was another really um, interesting part of this piece, just because. Um, it really drives, A, it drives the composition in the way that I was really wanting it to, and it shows the connection between what they're coming from and what they are creating, which I think is really interesting because everybody pretty much comes from DNA. That's what really makes you who you are, um, plus, of course, your your life experiences and things like that. Um, but showing that people can come from... Um, come from something like simple DNA and then create something com something as complex as a seven-fingered hand that that hand in itself has the ability to create and modify things on its own and I think that is just really interesting um, and going into this um, portion of the video you get to actually see the DNA strand which is pretty nice um, I'm I guess I'll talk a little bit about the auras because I did skip over that real quick um, for those of you who don't really know what auras are, it's basically a visual representation of an individual's energy. And um, while I had initially put this in the painting to balance the colors and the composition better, um, I feel like uh, putting the auras in there really just drove the message home of separation within a relationship and, you know, coinciding with your separations. And um, that's really like a big theme of this piece is accepting the parts of yourself that you don't like. Um, and, you know, the, the fact that there is no need to separate parts of yourself that you aren't super proud of or you don't like to talk about um, because it is still a part of who you are. And, um, you know, it's part of what makes everybody everybody themselves, you know, and everybody unique, and that is just so super interesting to me, but, um, yeah, so I think adding the auras and the different colors, um, of the energies, um, really helped the flow of this piece, it really helped the message of this piece, and it really, like, I feel like it just finished off the top half of this painting really, really nice, um, but yeah, so, um, going back to this DNA strand a little bit, I um, this was another part of this painting that was kind of a focal point within the composition, and it's mainly because it leads f up the center line of the painting into the main focal point, and I think that within itself really does say something, um, because it's where these people are coming from, and how they come together, and then what they can create, and I know that this is probably getting a little bit repetitive, but um, it is really just the message that I wanted to drive, so I, I really just feel the need to make a stern point of it. 
Um, but yeah, here you will get to see one of the infamous, infamous many black layers that I put on the bottom of this painting. Um, and, uh, that's mainly, I put black layers around, like, the edges of pretty much everything in this painting, mainly just because I wanted everything to be super sharp, and when I sketched everything out, I was, um, using, like, this brownish, um, very warm-toned paint, and, um, just doesn't look super great against the black with, um, with other things going on. It gets very busy, so I, um, just trying to refine everything, make everything look precisely the way that I want it to, and I feel like this is really one of the more satisfying parts of the piece to look at. Unfortunately, I didn't get to record the, um, the in-between strands, but that is pretty simple, you know, I just went in with a small brush and put those lines in and shaded them a little bit, you know, that wasn't super crazy. Um, but next, I guess, I'll talk a little bit about um, the moon, because you get a very good view of the moon. I feel like in this piece, um, I got a good sense of femininity from it in the very beginning. I feel like the energies in this piece are very balanced between feminine and masculine, and um, originally when I was planning this out, I um, it, it was very much to get in contact with my more feminine side because I've always just been a very masculine girl, <laughs> but um, I don't know, I think... Um, as this piece evolved and as I got to watch it evolve, it um, really took on its own shape and its own form and it's very, um, I just feel like it's very well balanced. It doesn't feel androgynous, which is nice because I was a little bit worried about that with putting a female and a male character like so heavily connected in the center of this very large piece. I didn't want them to kind of just like cancel each other out, but I feel like the play between the feminine and the masculine energies in this are just really nice. Um, but next I guess I'll talk a little bit about um, the vines that I am putting in here right now. And um, the vines, I'm not gonna lie, are one of my favorite, favorite parts of this piece. It, they were so satisfying to paint. They were so like just relaxing to go in and streamingly put them along. But um, they also hold a very um, big significance in the meaning of this piece. And, you know, that's why I did make them such a focal point within the composition. And I really just let them kind of stand on their own. I was thinking about putting some other things like leaves and maybe some more extra vines and stuff in there, but I felt like just having the two vines was very striking and that's what I wanted. Um, but basically what the vines represent, I know I talked about this in my other video, so if you want to go and get a little bit of a deeper understanding, you can head over there. But um, basically the vines represent the parts of yourself that you don't like or that you try to separate from a relationship. and. Basically, the way that I put them in um, is saying that, you know, trying to separate parts of yourself from a relationship are just going to weigh you, weigh you both down because it makes the other person feel like you're hiding something and it makes you feel not so great because you can't be totally open. And, um, you know, even if there are ugly parts of yourself, if you really truly care about somebody and they really truly care about you, then... The parts of yourself that you don't like, they're going to try and help you build your confidence in those areas, or they're going to show you that it's okay to be like that, and you don't have to hide from yourself or run from yourself, and I just felt like that was really, like, when I was first initially sketching and painting this was what I really intended this piece to be mainly about it was about the connection and the separation of the parts of yourself that you don't like and I honestly feel like it has developed into so much more and because of that it really drives that point that much further without making the piece feel super negative and um, heavy or just like depressing and sad um especially with so many dark colors, I didn't want it to feel, I didn't want it to feel sad because there's no reason to be sad if there's something that you don't like, you know, if there's something you don't like about yourself, then you have full power to change it, you know, you can be anybody that you want to be, and it, that was something that just took me a really long time to learn, and I'm still, <laughs> I'm still working on it, but 
I definitely feel it's a problem that a lot of people have, and I really hope that by looking at this piece, um, maybe the people who feel that will be able to gain some kind of insight um, in, in seeing this, but I don't know. I mean, even if they don't, it was still fun to make. <laughs> but, yeah, I just, um, really, at the end of the day, my art is not only to help me, it's to help everybody who sees it. I want anybody who sees my art to be happy and filled with joy and, um, you know, just feel, feel what I'm feeling in that piece. And I feel like I actually did a really good job of that in this one. And it's not something that I always, um, feel like I drive home, but I feel like in this one, I did a really good job of that. And, um, yeah, so, uh, if anybody does feel that when when looking at this piece, f please feel free to drop a comment. I um I love to hear what you guys think about my artwork, and uh, yeah. So, um, basically, you'll see here I'm just putting in the hair for both of the characters, and I went through a couple different renditions with this hair. Um, mainly because in the original sketch, you guys can see that I put. I did do the hair pretty much the same exact way as how I did in the painting, and I chose to do that mainly because I wanted it to have that feel of ethereality, if that's a word or that makes sense. But um, I just wanted, I just wanted the hair to feel like it was the one part of the figures that was kind of like the bridge between the the background and the foreground so what is actually happening in the real in reality in the real world um versus what is happening within the mindscape of the people in this painting and um i feel like i did a pretty good job of using the hair to kind of bridge that gap because i did my best to render it as realistically and close to the style as the people as i could um, but I still gave it that, like, floatiness and, like, almost weightless kind of a jive. And, um, I feel like that really helped bridge between what is real and what is real within the mindscape of this painting. And, um, yeah, so I, I really just wanted to use the hair as, like I said, a bridge. And, um... Right now you can see I'm working on the hands. I i don't know why. I, I did not struggle at all with the seven-fingered hand. I don't know. Like, that doesn't really make sense. I'm messing with the anatomy of a hand, and I didn't have any problem painting that one. But the, <laughs> the two hands on the actual figures that are normal hands, I just really struggled with. And um, I struggled with it even more because when I put the varnish on at the very end of this painting, it started peeling the paint off my canvas and it started smudging everything so <laughs> so I did actually have to repaint one of the hands and um, I did have to repaint pretty much the entire bottom half of the piece um, right after I varnished it and like the top corner where the the male's hair was um, which is another reason why I say I put a million layers of black paint on this canvas but I think the hands came out okay, despite, um, almost getting peeled off by the varnish. <laughs> and, um, despite all the struggles that I had with them, I think, you know, struggling with hands is a pretty, it's a pretty normal thing with an art, and it's just something that you have to get used to. I feel like I am getting better with it. Um, I definitely feel I've gotten a lot, lot better at drawing hands. It's just, um, painting them that I find to be a little bit difficult. But... Yeah, and the reason why I had them actually holding the vines instead of just having the vines latch onto them was mainly because it is still a part of themselves. I wanted to show that you shouldn't let parts of yourself go because you think someone else isn't going to like it or or maybe you don't like it. You know, there are parts of yourself that sometimes you just have to accept and if you are not willing to accept them, then you have to change them, you know? And um that was kind of a a big theme with me having having the hands actually like tightly grabbing the um the vines instead of just having the vines basically latching onto their hands which I feel like definitely would have worked um probably just as well if not maybe better but I don't really know um 
Plus, you guys will get to see that I... So these lines, this is where I had to repaint everything. Um, and I only had to repaint it mainly because I did this with marker. And I read the varnish container and it didn't say anything about not being compatible with marker. So I was just like, okay, I'm sure it'll be fine. And it picked up all the pigment of the markers and just like shifted it around. So I did have to redo this like three different times. <laughs> before I got it right but I do really like it and I feel like these ones in the corner that you can see I'm doing now really balance the composition super well but yeah um if you guys enjoyed this video please leave a like or a comment and um if you like the content that I produce please subscribe it really means a lot to me I um I really really love this piece so if you do too um please feel free to reach out to me by any means I will have all of my social media and my shop linked below. If you would like this piece, you can purchase it there. Um, I hope you all have a really wonderful day, and thank you so, so much for watching.